also tonight. It is incredible how quickly Jeffrey Epstein's luck has changed in his life. After getting a very light sentence for underage prostitution, he is now looking at a very long time behind bars, potentially. After he offered a $100 million package to be able to go back to his nice home in New York City and be under constant surveillance, the judge said, no way. Now, court documents reveal that one of his accusers has a very compelling argument about her sexual slavery, and it does not look so good right now for the royal family. Prince Andrew, the Duke of York, has caused headaches for the royal family for years, but not at this level. In 2015, Virginia Roberts accused Epstein of forcing her to have sex with Prince Andrew when she was 17 years old. Buckingham Palace has denied the whole thing, but with more documents coming out, this could turn into a royal mess. Here now, New York Post award-winning investigative journalist Maureen Callahan, also author of American Predator. Good to have you here, um, Maureen. So you say that, that he's the queen's favorite son and that he is no stranger to embarrassing this family. Elaborate on that for me. He has a long history of associating with various strong men and oligarchs for personal profit. Um, and he has had this association with Jeffrey Epstein, perhaps his most troublesome for many, many, many years. Even Epstein's conviction, as you noted, on this very light charge of underage prostitution, which that phraseology is weird, should be child rape yeah. and trafficking. Um, but even after he was released from a very light 13-month sentence in Palm Beach County Jail, he comes back to his beautiful Upper East Side townhouse and he is feted along with Prince Andrew. They spend four days celebrating together. They take a very chummy walk through Central Park. And meanwhile, Epstein gets on the phone to try to settle some debts that have been caused by Andrew's equally troublesome ex-wife, the greedy Sarah Ferguson. Yeah, I mean, when you read these documents, um, you know, some of which have come out and others uh, we all hope uh, at some point will come out so we can you know, learn some of the details here. Um, but he, that, that, that's the way his accusers say he worked. Like he would, he would bring them in, force these girls to have sex with people like this, and then have them tell him, Epstein, all about it. And he said, so I have something on them. To all these powerful people, so I'll have something on them. That's the way he works. It's an interesting point because you would think at this point, why would Andrew have continued to associate? And I find it so interesting. I wrote the column today because, you know, this whole summer, We've been served up British royal family scandal that is about, you know, infighting among the sisters-in-law or, you know, Harry and William having a falling out. Here's an actual British scandal involving the royal family. Prince Andrew was called on the carpet, actually, by, the, by Buckingham Palace in 2011 after this all went down and was told, you cannot associate with him anymore. And he threw a fit. By all accounts, he said, I'm loyal to Jeffrey. You're being a Puritan. Being loyal to friends is a virtue. It's what I'm going to do. And it's this hard-headedness that I think mm. could ultimately be his undoing. Yeah, I, I loved uh, Epstein when he was off and in New York after he served uh, that time. He was telling reporters, I'm an offender, not a predator. <laughs> That's like the difference between being a murderer and someone who steals a bagel. That's how he sees all of this. He was stupid enough to say that, and he was stupid <laughs> enough to talk to the New York Post. Oh. I mean, come on. What is he thinking? Maureen, thank you very much. Maureen Callahan, thank great you. to see you tonight.